Verb problems. In this chapter, we will discuss three high frequency verb problems. Tense shifting between present and past, choosing the right tense for past time events, and rise or raise, sit or set, lie or lay. One, tense shifting between present and past. The term tense shifting refers to a writer's switching from present tense to past tense or from past tense to present tense in the same paragraph or even in the same sentence. Sometimes tense shifting is inappropriate. Sometimes it is obligatory. Here's an example of tense shifting when it is not appropriate. Verbs in italics. Whenever I see an old Monty Python episode on television, I recorded it. The writer has improperly shifted from present tense C to past tense recorded. Here's a reverse example of not shifting when we should. Last summer, we went to a resort that was near Santa Barbara. The writer has improperly failed to shift from past tense was to present tense. The problem of shifting is rooted in not understanding the different functions of the present and past tenses. Two, choosing the right tense for past time events. In this section, we focus on how to decide whether we should use the past tense, the present perfect tense, or the past perfect tense to describe a past time event. Each of these three past time tenses has its own distinct meaning. A skillful writer knows which one will best suit the intended meaning. Three, rise or raise, sit or set, lie or lay. These three pairs of verbs are often confused. Part of the reason why it is so difficult to remember which member of each pair to use is that they are related to one another in a highly unusual way. By understanding how the verbs in each of these pairs are systematically related to one another, you will be better able to use them correctly. Tense shifting between present and past. To shift or not to shift, that is the question. The term tense shifting refers to a writer switching from present tense to past tense or from past tense to present tense in the same paragraph or even in the same sentence. Here's an example of inappropriate tense shifting, verbs in italics. Whenever we went to my grandfather's house, we always have to eat with the TV on. The verb in the first clause, went, is in the past tense, while the verb in the second clause, have, is in the present tense. In this example, the writer could not decide whether she was telling a story about visiting her grandfather's house, past tense, or making a statement of the fact about what eating at her grandfather's house is like, present tense. Either choice is perfectly fine, but it is not fine to switch horses in midstream. The writer should commit to one alternative and stick with it. If the writer wanted to tell a story about a visit, then she should have stayed in the past tense throughout the narrative. Story. Whenever we went to my grandfather's house, we always had to eat with the TV on. If the writer wanted to make a factual statement about visits to her grandfather's house, then she should have stayed in the present tense throughout her statement. Statement of fact. Whenever we go to my grandfather's house, we always have to eat with the TV on. The problem with shifting is rooted in not understanding the different functions of the present and past tenses. Following is a brief summary of their different functions. For more detailed information, look at the section on present and past tense used in chapter four. Present tense. The term present is misleading. The present tense is not tied to the present moment of time. The two main uses of the present tense are one, to make statements of fact, and two, to make generalizations. Here are some examples of statements of fact and generalizations. Present tense, verb in italics. Statement of fact. Chicago is in the central time zone. The planet Mercury has no atmosphere. Generalizations. Volkswagen Beetles are the cutest car on the market. San Francisco is a more interesting city than New York. John works on Saturdays. Notice the last example. John works on Saturdays. One kind of generalization is about people's regular customs or habitual actions. The use of the present tense in this sentence tells us that it is John's regular custom to work on Saturdays. Both statements of fact and generalizations are essentially timeless. That is, they are not limited to a particular moment of time or even to a span of time. They are usually true statements of facts or an assertion of one's opinions about what is true, generalizations. 
Nonfiction writing is typically written in the present tense. Notice, for example, that the present tense is used throughout this book, except for examples which often depict specific time-bounded events. Past tense. The past tense obviously is used to describe events that took place in a past time. However, there is more to use of the past time than this statement would imply. Because the present tense is preemptive for making timeless statements of fact and generalizations, the past tense becomes the primary vehicle for all narration that deals with time-bounded events. For this reason, nearly all fiction, stories, and novels are written in the past tense. There is one rather odd exception to the distinction between the use of the present tense for nonfiction and the use of the past tense for fiction. Sometimes stories and novels, even ones set in past time, are written entirely in the present tense. When the present tense is used this way, it is called the historical present. For example, a novel written in the historical present about Queen Elizabeth I might read like this, verbs in italics. Elizabeth enters the council chambers and sees Lord Leicester. She asks him what he thinks about the Spanish threat. Most writing guides strongly advise beginning writers to stay away from the historical present. It is difficult to handle and it gets very tiresome very quickly. Interestingly, about the only place we ever encounter the historical present is in jokes. For example, verbs in italics. This guy goes into a bar and sits down. A few minutes later, this polar bear comes in and sits down next to him and orders a drink. When should we shift tenses? What we have said to this point makes it sound like tense shifting is a bad thing. Certainly, shifting tenses unnecessarily is a bad thing. However, we need to shift tenses whenever we shift from narration to generalization or statement of fact, something we do quite often. Here is an example of legitimate and necessary tense shifting, verbs in italics. Shakespeare wrote Hamlet around 1600. The action of the play is set in Elsinore Castle in Denmark, though there is no evidence that Shakespeare ever visited Denmark or ever left England for that matter. Notice that the tenses bounce back and forth from past, wrote, to present, is twice, and then back to past, visited, and left. The first sentence, Shakespeare wrote Hamlet around 1600. This deals with an event that took place in past time. So the past tense wrote is perfectly appropriate. The next clause, the action of the play is set in Elsinore Castle in Denmark. Shifts to the present tense. The present tense is appropriate here because the writer is now giving us a statement of fact about the play, a legitimate function of the present tense. If the writer had kept the clause in the past tense, it would have sounded quite odd. The action of the play was set in Elsinore Castle in Denmark. This use of the past tense implies that while Shakespeare had originally set the action of the play in Elsinore Castle, he later changed his mind and set it somewhere else. The remaining part of the sentence. Though there is no evidence that Shakespeare ever visited Denmark or ever even left England for that matter, begins in the present tense, is. The present tense is appropriate because the author is making a statement of fact. There is no evidence. Then the author shifts to the past tense, visited and left, to tell us about events that took place in past time. Probably the most common single situation in which writers fail to shift tenses when they should shift is when they embed a piece of factual information inside a past tense narrative. Here's a typical example, verbs in italics. When they visited Key West, which was the southernmost city in the continental United States, the use of past tense visited for a narrative is normal and expected. However, in this case, the writer mistakenly stays in the past tense, was, while giving a statement of fact. The writer makes it sound as though Key West is no longer the southernmost city in the continental United States. Here, the writer should have shifted to the present tense. We then visited Key West which is the southernmost city in the continental United States. Summary. The term tense shifting refers to shifting from present tense to past tense or vice versa. In the same passage or sentence, tense shifting can be either appropriate or inappropriate. The key to understanding tense shifting is understanding the different functions of the present and past tenses. 
The present tense, despite its name, is timeless. That is, we use it to make statements of fact or generalizations, neither of which is connected to the present moment of time. The past tense is for describing events, actions that are time-bounded. We use the past tense for all narrations. The basic rule is not to shift tenses unless there is a reason, but if there is a reason, then you must shift. Choosing the right tense for past time events. In this section, we will focus on choosing the right tense for past time events. Specifically, how do we decide when we should use the past tense? The present perfect tense or the past perfect tense? We will first briefly recap how each of these three tenses is formed and then turn to a more detailed discussion of how the tenses are used. Past tense. The regular past tense is formed by adding ed or d to the end of the base form of the verb. For example, talk, talked, wave, waved. Many verbs have irregular past tense forms. The verbs with irregular past tenses are discussed in more detail than most people would want to know in chapter four. The past tense is used to describe time-bounded events. The term time-bounded refers to a description of a single event that took place at one specific moment in space and time. The past tense is the normal tense for all narration. Virtually all stories and novels are written in the past tense. Present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is formed by the present tense of the helping verb have, followed by a second verb in the past participle form which we can summarize as follows. Present perfect equals have, has, plus past participle. We use the present perfect to describe actions that have occurred continuously or repeatedly from some time in the past right up to the present moment, sometimes with the implication that these actions will continue into the future. Here are some examples of continuous action. Present perfect in italics. Their phone has been busy for half an hour. The kids have watched cartoons all afternoon. Here are some examples of repeated action. Present perfect in italics. The choir has sung the hymn a hundred times. It has rained off and on all summer long. The fundamental difference between the present perfect and the past tense is that the present perfect emphasizes the continual or repeated nature of events across a span of time while the past tense describes a single event action that is now over and done with. To see the difference, compare the following sentences. Present perfect. Elliot has lived in Chicago for 10 years. Past. Elliot lived in Chicago for 10 years. The present perfect sentence tells us two things. One, Elliot has lived in Chicago continuously for 10 years. And two, Elliot still lives in Chicago now. The sentence also implies that Elliot will continue to live in Chicago for the foreseeable future. The past tense sentence tells us that while Elliot lived in Chicago for 10 years, he does not live in Chicago anymore. His presence in Chicago is over and done with. A second use of the present perfect describes a recent past event whose impact is felt over a period of time right up until the present moment. Here are some examples. I'm sorry, Miss Smith has stepped away from her desk for a moment. Sam has lost his car keys. In both cases, an event that was begun in the past still continues in effect and very much impacts the present moment. In these examples, the present perfect emphasizes the ongoing duration of impact of the action. Often the choice between the past tense and the present perfect is not always a matter of right or wrong, but of what the writer wants to imply. For example, compare the following questions. Past tense, did you see Mary? Present perfect tense, have you seen Mary? The past tense question is ambiguous because it is not anchored to any specific past time. Without further specification of the time frame, the speaker could mean just now, yesterday, last week, or last year. However, the present perfect question can only refer to the recent past. Accordingly, we cannot use the present perfect to describe an event that took place at a time even slightly removed from the present. For example, notice how strange the following present perfect sentence sounds. Sam has lost his car keys yesterday. Past perfect tense. The past perfect tense is formed by the past tense of the helping verb, have, followed by a verb in the past participle form. Past perfect equals had plus past participle. Here are two examples of sentences with past perfect tenses. 
Their phone had been busy for half an hour before I got through. The choir had already sung that hymn at the beginning of the service. We use the past perfect when we want to emphasize the fact that a particular event in the past was completed before a more recent pastime event took place. Here are three examples with commentary. Past perfect in italics. I had stepped into the shower just when the phone rang. In this example, two things happen. One, the speaker stepped into the shower, and two, the phone rang. The speaker is using the past perfect to emphasize the inconvenient order of the two past time events. When we bought the house last year, it had been empty for 10 years. In this example, the past perfect is used to emphasize the fact that the house had been empty for the 10 year period before it was bought. They'd had a big fight before they broke up. In this example, the past perfect sequences of two events. One, a big fight. Two, a breakup. Here, the past perfect implies that not only did these two events happen in this order, but there is a, probably a cause and effect connection between them. That is, their big fight may have caused their subsequent breakup. The past perfect tends to be underused in writing, possibly because it is not used much in casual conversation. The past perfect requires more advanced planning than most of us can muster in the rapid give and take of an animated conversation. One of the cardinal differences between the spoken language and the written language is that while writing necessarily sacrifices the spontaneity of spoken language, written gives us the opportunity to revise and edit so that we can say exactly what we mean. For example, the following sentence is what we might say in conversation. After I was in classroom for a week, all my theories of education went out the window. Both clauses are in the past tense. The corresponding sentence in more formal, more precise written form would be like this. After I had been in the classroom for a week, all my theories of education went out the window. The use of the past perfect in the first clause tells the reader that the two clauses refer to different time periods. First, the writer went into the classroom and then, presumably as the result of this experience, the writer's theories went out the window. In the written form, the writer is able to exploit the built-in time relationship of the past perfect to get across the meaning in a more effective manner. Summary. The three main tenses that we use for talking about past time events are the past tense, the present perfect tense, or the past perfect tense. Each of these three tenses has its own distinctive meaning. The past tense is used primarily for single, unique events that are now over and done with. The past tense is used in nearly all narrations, stories, and other works of fiction. The present perfect tense is used for events that span a period of time or are repeated over time. The past perfect tense is used for a somewhat special purpose to emphasize that one past event occurred before a second, more recent event. Sometimes the past perfect tense is used to imply a cause and effect relation between the two events. Rise or raise, sit or set, lie or lay. These three pairs of verbs, rise or raise, sit or set, and lie or lay, are often confused. Part of the reason why it is so difficult to remember which member of the pair to use is that they are related to one another in a highly unusual and confusing way. Before discussing each of the three pairs in detail, we will turn to a fourth pair of verbs that are related in exactly the same way, but that are much easier to work with. Fall, fell, and causative verbs. The verb fall is an intransitive verb meaning, well, to fall. For example, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. The verb fell is a transitive verb that means to cut or bring something down. The most common use of fell is in reference to cutting down a tree. For example, the loggers felled all the trees on the ridge. The word fell can also be used to refer to bringing down an animal. For example, the hunter felled the charging rhino with a single shot. There are two other totally unrelated uses of the word fell. One, a noun derived from a Latin word that means the skin of an animal related to the word pelt, and two, an adjective derived from another Latin word that means cruel or terrible related to the noun felon. It would seem obvious that the verbs fall and fell are somehow related. They are, but they are related in a special and unusual way that to be understood requires an excursion into the history of the English language.